Hi everyone, I'm the Plant Propagator and welcome to my channel. If you're interested in learning a little bit more about what I do, please subscribe to my channel. Today uh, I want to talk with you about a topic that was suggested by one of my viewers. So uh, if you enjoy it, you can thank Stephen. If you hate it, you can do what you want with Stephen. So Stephen suggested uh, this talk today and what he wanted me uh, to, to share with you and to explain to you is uh, some one aspect of uh, photosynthetic metabolism. But before you turn me off um, and go to watch something else, uh, it, it's, it's important and I'll try to make it interesting. So just, just stay with me for, for just a little while. So um, what this is more a question of is why are my orchids growing slowly? And the answer to that is that orchids grow slowly. Uh, their metabolism in some areas is a very slow form of metabolism, and that's what I want to explain to you today. Uh, when you take a look at orchids compared to other plants, I don't know if you I think you can see. This is a tomato plant right here. So it's this tall. It's actually growing up into my oncidium here. And the toma this tomato plant is, um, I think it's about four months old from seed. So this is a rapidly growing plant, and this is what tomatoes do. Um, this and this, these two plants are orchids. And they're not four months old, they're a little over two years old. So these guys grow slowly. And uh, when you hear people talking about how their orchids are growing so quickly, those are people that are familiar with orchids and they know some orchids will grow really slow and some orchids will grow really fast, but overall they'll all grow really slowly. And this has to do with some basic aspects of metabolism and that's what I want to share with you today. So let's, let's back up a little bit and talk about um, protein. Let's talk about the most abundant protein on the planet Earth. So if you can guess, you might imagine it's a plant protein. And if you guess that, you were right. If you guess what that protein is involved with, and give you a second to think about it, okay, and if you guessed that it's photosynthesis, you're also right. The most abundant protein on the planet is rubisco, which stands for ribulose bisphosphate uh, carboxylase. And rubisco is involved in photosynthesis. And what photosynthesis does is it brings CO2 uh, into the plant and it takes the C of the CO2 and it fixes it to other carbons to make sugar. All right, and that's all there is to it. It's a very simple process that plants mostly breathe in CO2 and they make sugars. And the sugars are converted into a number of other things that are used for energy and sugars, as you know, is great stuff. Plants, in turn, break down water and release oxygen. So if, I, and I've given this lecture to kindergartners and they understand Plants breathe in, they know the letters CO2 and some of the numbers, and they breathe out O2, so they breathe out oxygen, and that's the simple part of it. Uh, plants also, and then we, on the other hand, breathe in oxygen and breathe out CO2, so it's a very nice complement, complementary process. Uh, plants also respire, they also uh, need oxygen and they, to do certain things, to break down uh, the sugars that they make and use them for energy. So they use some of their own uh, energy in the form of sugars and other compounds when they're growing as, as well. Okay, so let's talk about Rubisco, the most abundant protein on the planet. It takes in, again, it takes in this CO2 molecule and it adds it to other sugars. The problem is Rubisco, the molecule itself, is not very efficient. And the, one of the basic problems with it is it can also take in O2. And that's called, when it takes in O2, that's a wasteful process. And that's called photorespiration. So you want it to take in CO2, but unfortunately, the same place that the CO2 goes in, O2 can also slip in, and then that's a wasteful process. So some plants have dealt with way, in ways 
to manage that a little better, to reduce the amount of waste, and to make photosynthesis more efficient. The plants that normally just kind of, uh, that, that, that both bring in CO2 and also bring in O2 to that same rubisco molecule, those are called C3 plants because of the type of carbons. It's a C3 car uh, three carbon structure that they put out initially. And so those are called C3 plants. And again, this is a, this is a C3 plant and it grows just fine even though it, part of the process can be wasteful. There are other plants that are more evolutionarily advanced, I hope you're staying with me, that are called C4 plants and it makes a four carbon uh, structure out of the carbon that go, the carbon from CO2 that goes into the plants. And some of the most evolutionary advanced plants, these are things like, like maize, like corn, is an advanced plant. And what, what that does is it has a different photosynthetic, uh, a, a, and a complementary photosynthetic pathway. So it brings in um, CO2 and then it, it, it converts it in most of the leaf tissue to that four carbon structure. And then the, it also contains rubisco, but it's sequestered in the inner part of the leaf. And I'm sorry, I hope this isn't, isn't too confusing for you. So the O2 is in the outside, and then the, the, it's brought in the, to the inside of the leaf where there's not as much oxygen in there. And then it's released so the rubisco is then more efficient because there's not as much oxygen on the inside of the leaf. And then again, so that is C4 plants. Okay, what does any of this have to do with orchids? Well, um, there's another orchids, a lot of the orchids, about half of the orchids or more, the ones that are succulent, that are thick-leaved, have a different photosynthetic um, metabolism. And that's called CAM, C-A-M. St CAM stands for Crassulaceae Acid metabolism. And what this does is it, instead of separating spatially, it separates the production of these carbons uh, over time. All right, so what CAM plants do, most succulents, including some of the orchids, is that they breathe in the CO2 just at nighttime. And then in the daytime, what happens is the, the structures that let the CO2 go into the leaf, they close at night, and so that it, it kind of shuts itself off from everything. But what CAM does is it makes other types of carbon structures at night when the plants are breathing in CO2. And then the, uh, the breathing structures in the plants close, and then when it closes, there's not as much oxygen allowed to get in, that CO2 is released to Robisco, and then you have normal, pho normal photosynthesis, th C3 metabolism occurs. All right, so what happens with this, and, and so orchids are classified as a, as half of the orchids, uh, the encyclias and catlias are part of, they, they undergo uh, CAM metabolisms, metabolism. Some other CAM plants I should show you are, Oop, got to put it like this. Um, aloe, mostly, most, a lot of the succulents. So, um, uh, calancho or calancoe or calanco or however you want to call it, that's another cam type plant. Um, sedum, pineapple. Uh, I've got some pineapple growing uh, in front of my house here. Uh, bromeliads, those are all cam, those are all undergo cam photosynthesis. Um, these plants, again, tend to be succulent. These plants tend to grow very slowly. Uh, and there's not much that, uh, that, you can, that you can do about it. That's part of the basic photosynthetic metabolism of these plants. So they tend to be, because of the process and because if you can imagine the plants are just taking a breath in at night and then breathing out in the uh, you know in in, um, in in I'm sorry breathing <laughs> breathing in at in at night and then breathing out at night also and then they but they stop breathing at night and then the day in the daytime they stop I'm sorry they stop breathing in the daytime and at night they breathe again they they allow the CO2 back in so it's kind of a slow process if you can imagine you know the orchids and these other succulents 
breathing slowly, it only lets a limited amount of CO2 into the structure, uh, into the leaf structure of these orchids. So they tend to be very slow growing. All right, and that's just the basic metabolism of these plants. Um, as I said, uh, the encyclias and the cattleyas, these are, these undergo CAM metabolism. And I know this not because I can tell, but because I looked it up. Um, there are C3 orchids that don't undergo this special succulent type of metabolism. Uh, and, and this is uh, the, the sherry baby, is the, uh, this oncidium, is a C3 plant. Uh, just so you know, so the, the tomato we've already talked about, the bromeliad here, um, I've got uh, sage here, I've got mint, um, the palm trees that you probably can't see, those all are C3 plants, so those all undergo different types of metabolism. Uh, and again, some of these orchids and these succulents undergo, undergo uh, C or under, undergo CAM metabolism. So I hope you stayed with me through that. Um, I didn't want to go into essentially the metabolites that were made. I just wanted to give you a very basic overview of C3, uh, the standard metabolism in plants, C4, which is a special advanced metabolism from the more evolutionary advanced plants. And then even though orchids are evolutionary fairly advanced, they have a different type of evolved metabolism called CAM. Meta CAM, these are all different types of photosynthetic metabolism. So that's all I have for today. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about what I do, please subscribe to my channel. If you have suggestions uh, for what you want to hear about, please just put that uh, in, in the comments. If you want me to talk, I've got some ideas here. If you want me to talk about, um, let's see, I can talk about vanilla orchids. I can talk to you more on flasking. I can talk to you a little bit about orchid breeding. Um, I can talk with you about orchid biotechnology, which is what I did in my previous life. Um, I can interview, I can have interviews, or I can ask questions to, uh, to breeders or growers or the Just Add Ice orchid uh, people. Uh, or if you want to just keep on hearing about how I grow my orchids and propagate other plants, that's fine too. I can certainly stay on track with that. So that's all I have for today. I hope you stayed with me and happy propagating.